traumatized by this and uh, turn her romantic attentions toward women. The data that I know don't support that because uh, a significant proportion of the abuse is female to female. <coughs> Uh, but the worst thing is that this isn't subject to empirical testing very well. You can try to establish the correlation. The correlations fluctuate from study to study. In many, they're not impressive. Um, We don't know everything, but that doesn't, from what I know from the literature, that doesn't seem to be a very plausible explanation. Not a great answer, that's the best thing I know how to say. Sir? Do you have any thoughts on last weekend's Evergreen International Conference? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been turning in this direction. I should turn in this direction. Yes? Have there been any studies across uh, different ethnicities to support? Can you start again? Have there been any cross studies uh, with the other ethnicities? The question is, are the findings, are the, are the findings supported by studies across ethnicities? Uh, and the answer is yes. Uh, homosexuality seems to have been part of the human condition from the very beginning, whenever that was. Uh, you can imagine that the academic studies have been performed most often in Western countries. They all seem to agree. Uh, in general principle to what I have cited tonight. Uh, in spite of cultural differences. And I've just thought of two more things I want to say in response to the question about sexual abuse. Uh, a, a study among the people of Zambia, a almost Stone Age culture is instructive because in this culture uh, adult to, to child male-male homosexual practice is common as part of growing up. And um, it is believed by this people that as a rite of passage into manhood uh, a child must ingest semen. In spite of years of this kind of sexual behavior among these people, when th these young boys grow up to be men, they universally marry and behave sexually as men. It's also true that when uh, studies have been performed <coughs> in English boarding schools, same gender boarding schools, where apparently same gender uh, experimentation is quite frequent. There is no correlation between that activity and the sexual orientation of those men and women. Yes. Uh, I men 
six on the Kennedy scale. They are people who, uh, by reasonable judgment, are gay men who say about themselves, I'm not a gay man. I'm, I'm a heterosexual who's struggling. Uh, I'm, I'm some, someone working my way, transitioning out of homosexuality. I'm not really one of those. That's just one example of how identity can be problematic. And so what I know about most of the most, about the most recent study is that there is an attempt to assess all of these and subjects who admit to some degree of homo of same gender. Sure. Um, I am an, an active LDS member and I, I believe um, that the church can offer a lot of good things. And a lot of things that you said in your lecture really uh, touched me. A couple of being that homosexuality is not a disease and uh, um, also that our, our gay and lesbian brothers and sisters belong in our community and, and don't need to be ostracized. Um, and I believe in those things. Oh, I agree with you very strongly about that. And I'm wondering, um, do you have any advice for someone within the LDS community who wants to make a, a difference and, and help uh, build bridges uh, and and erase uh, barriers and, and allow our gay and lesbian women to just feel welcome at church without someone like me appearing to be <coughs> kicking against the pricks or rejecting the brethren or um, being scandalous. <laughs> <laughs> alluded to the complexity of some of the issues and that's certainly one. And there are people in this room who know a lot more about that than I. Um, um, I read a paper last night uh, 